What's going on guys? My name is Mr. Hurricane and welcome back to the St. Louis Rams Connected Franchise. It's week 16 and the playoff race is heating up. Our Rams are in the thick of the wildcard playoff hunt as we take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week in our final home game of the regular season. Trying to make it back to the postseason, here are the NFC standings. We are tied at 8-6 with the Packers and the 49ers, and there are some other teams in the hunt, but we have to go and get this victory today against Tampa Bay after losing last week to the New Orleans Saints. It was a really rough game. Sam Bradford had four interceptions, and now we have to bounce back against Josh Freeman. Yes, you heard that correctly. Josh Freeman and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here in Week 16. And the Buccaneers have the football to begin the day. Josh Freeman, 17 touchdowns, 20 picks, less than 50% completion percentage. He's going to give it to Doug Martin, his halfback on second down and 10 for a pick of about 5 or 6. But we have to watch out for these big wide receivers, Mike Williams, Vincent Jackson, but it's a screen on third down and 4, and Martin goes nowhere. Maybe a gain of 1, excellent stop. It's now time for our offense to take the field wearing these vintage Rams uniforms. And our first play is a handoff to Zach Stacy going straight ahead, tackled after a gain of three. Bradford goes to the gun on third down and seven, three wide. Quick pass to the outside in front of Darrell Revis. It's hauled in by Chris Gibbons for an eight yard first down into Bucks territory we go. Bradford off the play action, dumps it over the middle, hauled in by Stacy. A good gain of about seven or eight as we have crossed the Bucks 40 yard line offset eye formation. Bradford gives to Stacy up the middle, and the ball is jarred loose. The Buccaneers have fallen on it, and we have turned it over again. Zach Stacy with his second fumble in as many games. And that is a costly mistake on a drive that we had a pretty good start to. Josh Freeman will take over. Empty backfield, he's going to throw it. On second down to the middle, it's caught by Ogletree. He lost the football, but the Bucks have that one too. And they maintain possession in Rams territory. Freeman out of the shotgun. Takes the snap, fires right side to the sideline. And it is incomplete. Vincent Jackson cannot get both feet down, so third down and eight. Three wide for Freeman. He's going to slide right under pressure and sacked by Chris Long. That ends the Bucks' drive and we'll take over again as Stacy is still in the game. Bradford on first down middle and it's hauled in by Austin Pettis running a slant. It's a 15-yard reception at the 35 of St. Louis. The fake to Stacy. Bradford rolls out of the pocket to his right, fires back over the middle and it's caught by Chris Givens for a first down at midfield. This is a good Bucks defense with a lot of money invested in that secondary. Second down, the pass short, and it's almost intercepted going the other way, but incomplete, intended for Jared Cook, and forces third down and nine. Bradford back to throw, pressured inside, pass to Stacy, and he just flat out drops this one. A fumble and a drop to end the drive. And the Buccaneers will take over. Still no score here in the first quarter. From their own 16, the blitz gets to Freeman, and he throws off his back foot. And it's incomplete intended for Vincent Jackson. Second and 10, it's Doug Martin. The draw up the middle. Laurinaitis in the hole, he runs him over. To the 20-yard line, a four-yard gain for Doug Martin. Another third down for Josh Freeman in the pocket. Pressured off the edge, dumps it over the middle, and it's hauled in by Mike Williams. That is a first down for the Buccaneers. He needed five, and they got seven. This is a big test for our secondary. Both of our outside corners are under six foot. As Freeman lobs it outside, this is Tom Crabtree. He beat James Laurinaitis in the ex-Packer as 22 in the Rams territory. And now Shepard over the middle. He beat Laurinaitis in his zone. That's 12 more. The Buccaneers are threatening to score the first points on the day. Freeman back to throw to the middle, and Luke Stalker has it. And once again, it's Laurinaitis who is the one getting victimized in pass coverage. Let's see who makes a play on third down and 10. Freeman to the outside, and he Freemans it out of bounds for an incomplete pass, well overthrown. And the Bucs will settle for a field goal attempt as Greg Schiano appears to be a little upset with his starting quarterback. 3-0 Tampa Bay. Rams have it as Daryl Richardson has entered the game. Zach Stacy is going to the bench. A fumble and a drop. We're trying to make the playoffs here. No room for error. Second down and eight. Bradford under pressure off the edge. Good coverage downfield. And Mark Anderson will sack Sam Bradford. It's third down and 18. More pressure this time on the inside. And Bradford's taken down by Gerald McCoy. Back-to-back -back sacks. The Buccaneers start their drive at the Rams 36 following the punt return. It's Doug Martin running through a defender that was 
TJ McDonald, it's an eight yard gain for Martin. Hannah comes in motion on third and inches and Freeman's gonna pass it. Everybody going long and Freeman has room to run but instead throws a wildly inaccurate pass. I have to question that one as Shiano is once again angry and they settle for another field goal. 6-0, Tampa Bay leads as Daryl Richardson is still in the game running past the 40 yard line. This is a gain of 11 to move the chains. He's done well coming off the bench. We'll see if he can have some prolonged success in this game. And now Gibbons over the middle, a cut to the outside and breaking for the end zone. Chris Gibbons, touchdown St. Louis. The run after the catch by Chris Givens. He made a move on Darrell Revis and streaked to the end zone. Here it is one more time. Just makes a hard cut back to the outside. And that is the first touchdown of the day as the Rams have secured their first lead. 7-6 here midway through the second quarter. First and 10, Doug Martin gets it again back straight ahead. This is good for about 8 or 9, but no big carries so far. 3.7 yards a carry. It's going to be Martin again, though. He has a hole opened up and a first down for Tampa Bay. We'll see if they rely more on Martin as Freeman has made a couple bad throws in recent drives. It's third and five. They're going to keep it in Freeman's hands. Short to Martin and buried by Alec Ogletree. It's a gain of two, and the Buccaneers will punt. Rams have it at their own 20-yard line. 2.43 to play in the first half as Tavon Austin makes the catch. Gets upended by Darrell Revis, an 11-yard reception. We have now reached a two-minute warning. Second down and ten. Bradford to the middle. Tavon Austin. Goodbye. Putting on the Jets for a touchdown reception. It's Tavon Austin for 69 yards. Jordan Babineau trying to make an aggressive play to swath the football. He came up short, and he's going to pay the price. Tavon Austin does the rest with his legs, and the St. Louis Rams have extended the lead 14-6. And Freeman, watch out! Chris Long is there again. Second sack on the day. Backed up and now third down and 10. Freeman out of the shotgun. Has to get to the 45 and misses Doug Martin over the middle. Another inaccurate throw by Freeman and you gotta wonder, will they ever go to Mike Glennon? 107 to play in the first half. Rams gonna keep this in the air and play aggressive. Bradford flushed, going long, and it's caught by Darrell Revis for an interception. The Bucks have it, taking it to the Buccaneers 48-yard line. Darrell Revis makes Sam Bradford pay. Austin was open for a while, but with Revis's range and Bradford being a little late in the throw, that's what happens. That gives the Bucks another chance in the first half with under a minute to go. Down by eight and downfield, it's Kevin Ogletree hauling in the reception from Josh Freeman. That time a very accurate pass from the Rams 26 in field goal range. Josh Freeman to the end zone and knocked down by Will Witherspoon. Good job of the outside linebacker to maintain coverage. Second down for Freeman. Dropping back again, firing to Mike Williams who has the reception he beat. Janoris Jenkins decent coverage but these physical big wideouts are a big test. Third and five, Freeman and he misses Martin again. That should have been a touchdown for the Bucks. We'll take it, but Freeman had all day in the pocket, no pressure, and just flat out missed. Doug Martin coming across the middle, and the Bucks settle for a third field goal. Rams take a five point lead into the half, trying to hold on for win number nine. Welcome back to the second half as the Rams begin the third quarter with the football. It's 14-9. Josh Freeman has been very inconsistent today, and that's largely why the Rams have a five-point lead right now. And Daryl Richardson is still playing 19 yards on this reception. We're keeping him in the game as Zach Stacy had a key fumble in the first half, as well as a drop on a third down pass as this is Brian Quick making the reception, but we're not taking any chances right now. Richardson is playing, third down, Bradford, and Pettis drops this one. He was open, just dropped a first down. That's our second third down drop resulting in a punt. Josh Freeman is still in the game, Bucks have it again. Second down, Freeman pressured, and brought down by Chris Long. Make it three sacks on the day. Third down and 14, the tight shotgun for Freeman. Taking the snap and going outside and misses his target again, overthrown. Greg Schiano, how attached are you to Josh Freeman right now to keep him in the game? Rams have it again, but a third down and eight trying to avoid going three and out. And Bradford to Austin, hangs on in Bucks territory for a first down. Tavon nearing 100 yards on the day, Bradford over 230 passing. 
first down and 10 out of the backfield. This is Daryl Richardson, a block from Cook, and Richardson down the sideline for a first down as the Rams are in the red zone. Second and six, Bradford from the pocket to the middle, and it's hauled in by Givens for a first down reception at the five yard line. Trying to extend the lead, handoff Richardson, and stuffed by Babineau as he stops Richardson for a gain of one. That makes it third down and goal, trips left, Bradford rolls and fires, touchdown! Jared Cook with the touchdown reception, and the windmill dunk didn't even break the goal post. Take notes, Jimmy Graham. Nobody has to bring out some giant level to fix the goal post, but it's 21 to nine as the Rams lead. And Josh Freeman back to work and in traffic, it's caught by Vincent Jackson. Only a second catch on the day. Been very quiet. Our cornerback's doing a really good job as Martin takes this carry to the right and Alec Ogletree will deck him, but Ogletree is shaken up on the play. That'll put in Ray Ray Armstrong, but third and 12, Freeman taking his shot long, has Stalker and a first down at the Rams 40. That's Freeman's strength. Going deep and making big plays happen that way. Martin takes it again on first and 10. Runs left through a hole and a gain of six, but still, he hasn't really busted one through that second level yet. They need another big play from Freeman on third down and eight. Downfield and Vincent Jackson with the reception. Once again, a nice catch by Jackson and another third down coming up. Freeman back to throw. Trying to run and right into Chris Long. Four sacks on the day. A dominant season for Chris Long. And that makes Connor Barth come out for a fourth time to make it 21 to 12. Rams with a two score lead. Here in the fourth quarter trying to take some time off the clock. Third down and one. I formation, Daryl Richardson barely got it to Keo Spikes the long time better with the tackle. This time a third down and seven. Sam Bradford with time. Rolling to his left, good coverage, and finally corralled with a sack for the second time by Gerald McCoy, and the Buccaneers have it once more. It's only a nine-point game, but Josh Freeman has made a lot of bad throws. This one, however, not bad. It's a drop by Kevin Ogletree coming across the middle. So second and 10 from the 34-yard line. Four wide for Josh Freeman, caught by Martin coming across the middle again. That sets up a third down and short, and they're gonna give it in the hands of Doug Martin. He runs into his own blocker, and Cortland Finnegan tackles him. It's a loss of one, and the Bucks they got a punt again. So many missed opportunities and poor third down play. Daryl Richardson takes the carry, runs left past the Bucks defenders for a first down at the 46 yard line. And Isaiah Pete is checked into the game, takes the handoff, runs right, makes a big cut, and a hole in the defense as he's inside the 20 yard line. 36 yard in his first touch on offense. That's why we get all these guys involved. And now going back to our leading receiver, Jared Cook and Darrell Revis cannot hold him in front of the first down marker. Second down and goal for the Rams, trying to punch it in. Richardson lost the football, are you kidding me? But the Rams recovered. Almost a turnover at the one yard line. We're putting in Isaiah Peed now. Third and goal, and Peed straight ahead for a Rams touchdown. Our top two backs have fumbled. It's Isaiah Peed's turn to score. Touchdown Rams are going for the three score lead. We're up by 15, going for two, and Chris Gibbons. Why can't anybody hold on to the ball today? Drops and fumbles. I'm counting at least five or six combined between the two. Buccaneers down by 15. They still have a slim chance if Freeman can get some big plays in this pass game. They're working at midfield now. Four wide outs out of the shotgun. Two and a half to go. Josh Freeman to pass. Lobs outside. Caught by Vincent Jackson. And it's a gain of about six or seven. And the Bucs need some bigger chunks than that. We have reached the two-minute warning. Third down and three. Josh Freeman. Airmail out of bounds. Fourth and three coming up. What do the Bucs do? Well, two tight ends and a fullback. It's Josh Freeman handing off to Doug Martin, and the Rams are there, Alec Ogletree. No trust in Josh Freeman on that play. Can't say I blame him today. Rams still up by 15, trying to run this clock out. Isaiah Pete gets the carry, a great play made by the linebacker, and that holds us shy of the first down. The Bucks will get it yet again. Down by 15 and five of 16 on third down conversions. Third down, Freeman to throw. Downfield, wide open is Vincent Jackson. Breaking free across the 50 to the Rams 42. 
Freeman stands out of the shotgun. 60 seconds to play. Middle caught Stalker inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Will they take a shot at the end zone soon? 50 seconds to go. Freeman, good protection to the outside. Intercepted! That's the ball game. Cortland Finnegan will end the day for Josh Freeman and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as the Rams cruise to their ninth victory on the season, 27-12 in kind of a weird game. Josh Freeman's accuracy kept the Buccaneers to 12 points on the day. Doug Martin couldn't get the ground game going as our run defense was playing very well. And we had some fumbles and some drops on offense that should have given the Buccaneers enough opportunities to make some big plays on offense with some short fields, but they could not capitalize. And despite the inaccuracy, Freeman finishes with decent numbers, 61 completion percentage over 300 yards, one interception, zero touchdowns. Nobody really broke out in the ground game besides maybe Isaiah Peed and his limited carries, but the Rams have their ninth victory, and it's time to look at the updated NFC standings. We play the Seattle Seahawks in Week 17 as they have clinched the division, but we're still in the thick of the race with the 49ers and the Packers. We're all tied at 9-6. and six. Now, I've looked at the NFL tie-breaking scenarios, and the Giants have a tie, but I'm not sure if Madden counts the tie as half a victory in the win percentage. We didn't play the Giants, the Redskins, or the Packers this year. We did play the Niners twice and beat them. We have a better NFC record than the Packers, not better than the Giants, but the Giants, if the tie counts, then they should have already had the NFC East clinched, even if they lose to the Redskins in Week 17. They already beat the Redskins this year. The Packers lost both games to the Lions, so they can't win the NFC North. And if I have done this correctly, if we win, we are in because we have the tiebreaker over the Packers and the 49ers because we beat the Niners twice and have a better NFC record than the Packers. And if we win, the Redskins can't catch us. And if we win and the Giants win, well, the Giants have the East, so we would get a wild card spot. So I believe Week 17 is a win and in at CenturyLink. If we don't win, I don't really like our chances with the Niners playing the Cardinals and the Packers playing the Bears. We would have to have both of those teams lose, so we have to win this game against the Seahawks to make it to the playoffs, basically. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in Week 17 against the Seahawks. Have a great day.